Welcome to Rauta. This video is done in commercial collaboration with our sponsor Steelfest. Hi there, this is Rauda and welcome to one of the opinion videos. Now there's not much really to watch on this video, no graphical content whatsoever, so unless you were to stare at my ugly face for a long time, I suggest you just put a voice on only and uh, do whatever you do while you're listening to me rambling. Today's topic is newspapers in metal, metal newspapers, metal magazines and so forth, and the amount of promotion that basically is relevant or dominating there. Now, back in the days, metal music magazines were more dominating the whole metal industry and even more needed than nowadays. The things have changed since, um, you know, I was a teenager in 1990s and obviously it's a different world with all the media and all over that. Of course, of course this is part of the whole deal here. And uh, what I've noticed recently, and it kind of also bothers or annoys me, I don't know if so much other people, is that how things have changed. Maybe they haven't even changed that much, but this is my how I feel about it, how I perceive things. And it's the lack of uh, kind of a critical content on various metal uh, publications that isn't really the case with so something others. I'm going to use this as an example. For example, because I work in a gaming industry and because I read a lot about gaming, I mean, I do love video games and I also do like movies, TV shows and whatever. Um, a lot of these magazines or at least to some extent seem to do way more than just you know be all about publicity and basically just you know pushing out marketing promotion whatever when it comes to the given thing i mean be it video games or be it just movies or whatever there seems to be also articles and uh, writings about how things are and what is good or what is bad and all that stuff now when it comes to music publications especially the ones that are not online, it seems to be basically doing two things, reviews and interviews. Now, nothing wrong with that, obviously, because that's what we want to do. Some people say they don't really care about interviews because they're not really interested in what goes on in, in people's mind when it comes to, you know, musicians and all. I mean, some of them feel like, yeah, I don't care what the given musician, you know, does. I mean what makes him thick or whatever. I just want him to play good shows or do good records and all that stuff. Some say, I don't care about reviews because I can pretty much stream the content online or whatever. I don't need nobody to tell me whether an album is good or that. I understand both ways. Personally, I find still both very relevant and interesting. So I can't really say reviews are not needed. I mean, why would I do them if I didn't believe in reviews in my by myself? So I think, yeah, reviews still have place both in terms of promotion, but also kind of a gatekeeping thing, like this is something you should check out, this is something you should ch not worth, uh, which is not worth your time to check out. Not, don't bother with it because it's not good. So I think this kind of a guidance is very, very much needed. Obviously, each reviewer needs part of audience, you know, varies from place to place and taste to taste and all that stuff. So yeah, it's not like you can uh, agree with everything and that's not what it's supposed to be. But be it as it may, in the end, reviews are part of promotion, you know, in essence, marketing. Way cheaper, by the way, for a lot of labels and bands than any kind of paid ads. Okay, you take the risk of being, you know, commented to <laughs> called shit. I mean, like, if you want to, if you have this album and it's not really good and critical thinking might be saying like, okay, this is not really good. This is just a bad one. So in that sense, it, there is more risk, but also it's way, way cheaper than, you know, buying full page ads on any website or whatever you're doing. But yeah, I, I think reviews are in place. When it comes to interviews, they are even more about promotion. Whenever you read a new interview about a given band, it's more likely it's all about saying like how good this new album is, how much 
pain or you know sweat and tears or whatever was put into this album to make it wonderful it's better than any of our previous albums this is our best so far because blah 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 our new drummer is so goddamn good that we never played this i am now a be way better guitar player than any anywhere before blah 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 you get my idea and of course the journalists are trying to do interesting stories but more than that they also don't want to piss off the artist in question i get it it's not good for the magazine or any kind of publication so you're kind of about to go hand in hand and of course labels come into play as well if you piss off a label you might be out of the promotion loop or even more so add money and of course this makes you <laughs> more vulnerable to all the changes i mean especially with uh, online formats. People are not paying money to read or see what you have to say. I mean, for example, you know, YouTube isn't exactly bringing bring, bring money to people doing the content, much like me here, <laughs> but it's different when it comes to publications. People actually probably are gonna, you know, order a magazine, buy it, or whatever, and that actually brings some cash flow revenue to the magazine or publication. Now, this comes to that, that a lot of these magazines are just two ways of promotion. Once again, reviews and interviews. Makes sense, right? But there's nothing critical about it. It's almost like if you just remove the somewhat negative reviews out of equation, it becomes kind of a promotion tool. And if you really take a cynical sense to that, it feels like there are labels and, you know, they handle both the artists and the media. And whatever the labels do, they kind of uh, push the things around. And uh, publications are kind of uh, prone to do what they want. Because labels, publications, they are not as big as, you know, you know, the publications are not as big, the magazines and all that stuff, or online ones, than the labels. So if the labels don't give them cash or bring forth material, what the publications are going to do? Die. Because... One thing is for certain, everybody needs money to pay the bills. And if you don't have the bills to just keep the things going on, you just kind of die and fade away. And already I've seen that a lot happening with newspapers and publications in metal music especially, because there's so little money, everybody's expected to do that stuff just you know, for the love of it. And that means a lot of good writers are going to go someplace else because the other place just pay better. So in the end, everybody's either doing it for free and you get the idea how it goes. As long as you don't bite the hand that feeds, you're pretty much okay, which then again turns you into more into favor for labels and the like. See the problem here. Now my rant is basically all about the a lot of these publications, they don't have any kind of a critical sense. For example, I use this Finnish uh, Inferno magazine as a good example. I think it's very, very well done. Let's not forget that. There are good writers who know their stuff and all that. But there's basically like one page, a uh, column of sorts, you know, uh, an opinion page, basically, which actually has something else than peer promotion. And this writer is not not even the stuff anymore. Why so? Well, <clears throat> money, maybe. But the thing here is, a lot of the uh, the other content is basically just interviews and mainly about the you know latest releases and of course the reviews and the reviews are it seems like getting shorter i would know because i've been writing for the magazine once again i'm not going to slander this, the publication as such i'm using it merely as an example the point here is there are lots of these kind of publications where you don't re really see these opinions you know being voiced out like hey i'm gonna talk about this and that so instead of you know writing about for example metal in general and this goes way beyond printed publications by by the way uh, a lot of these just focus on reviews and interviews because well they're the kind of easy ones they're not gonna piss a lot of people off most interviews are done in a happy mood way. So of course, if you're a hater of a given band or if you don't like any particular interview, <laughs> interviewee, um, then you might be like, hey, I'm not going to buy that album. But then again, you're not a fan to begin with and you might still come in for with some clicks and all to just 
because you're going to vo voice out that, hey, I'm actually, I don't like this band, I don't like this artist or whatever. But interviews and reviews are bringing people in for, you know, a lot of happy things. So they keep the things rolling, but they are not very interesting in the sense that you're expected to see just nothing but promotion. The artist telling how good their latest album are or how, what kind of stuff kept them going and blah, blah, blah. It's promoting the music, the tours, the albums or whatever. And the reviews obviously doing the same. And where I would more like read, like, hey, tell me about this phenomenon, what's taking place here. Tell me about these new waves are happening. Not in the terms of reviews, not in the you know voice of the the artist itself, not by some label guy. You know, I'm talking about feature articles, history articles, or articles or news even, which are tackling some of the problems. They can be negative too. For example, there's this one, um, or actually two, uh, good gaming magazines in Finland, which have great reviews, but I also featured other things than just news or reviews. They also tackle some of the nasty ones, the, some of the problems or phenomena happening in the gaming industry. And I think it's very, very important. Like if they're going to talk about some crunch hours, which are very, very problematic in the gaming industry, they're not afraid to talk about it. And it's not just, just you know, like interviewing the companies, which are, of course, going to deny it or soften them things like, hey, it's not that bad in reality, blah, blah, blah. My point here is a lot of that kind of a content is needed and I feel it's fading out with one exception. There are always these kind of a clickbait sites which are gonna put out some shocking news things and maybe they're even shock value more than the actual facts. And I get it. They want their clicks as much as the next guy. Maybe even Rauta needs clicks. I don't know. I don't never bother it with. But the point here is uh, a lot of those go without fact checking and sometimes they are very much like politically loaded like picking sides already which is then again easy way to gather more fans and bigger audience base but let's be honest it's not you know any good journalism for example metal sucks side i mean they could basically have the muscles and possibility to do proper things i mean i've read some good stuff on the site i i give it that but i've also read some really stupid things which are very biased and <laughs> I think it kind of sucks because instead of you know focusing on the facts and uh, taking the perspective of critical thinking instead of just you know going on with the herd mentality or going on with the hype you even more like create black and white uh, one thing versus another kind of thing, you know, dividing people into two. And who gets to reap the best things out of it? They're already rich people, obviously, but I mean, for the common folk, it's just creating more problems. And so I'm trying to say that a lot of things need to be taken into context and thought without the actual money into play. I know a lot of people are not going to watch this video because it's probably way too lengthy. It's just rambling and ranting on way too random directions and not too focused and all that stuff. I get it. I mean, it, this is not a sexy topic to begin with, but it also bothers me. Like, a lot of interviews are not very interesting because the artists are not very interested to talk about topics when it's not about their latest album there every now and then there are artists which are ready to talk about history or some problems in the world, whatever the, their take is. And those are interesting ones. But a lot of it's just plain promo talking and like, I'm like, yeah, so you're selling your product and selling your band and blah, blah, blah. I get it. You have to make your living and you don't want to piss anybody off. But at the same time, it's just meaningless blabber in the world full of meaningless blabber, even more so than this particular video, if you get what I mean. And so I'm kind of annoyed, like, is this really the stage? Like, people are so often saying, like, yeah, metal has a strong ideology. No, it doesn't fucking have, because a lot of people are divided. A lot of people just care for the music. I come music first also, but I also have a lot of strong opinions which are going to piss a lot of people off. And that's fucking fine, by the way part of my friends but this is a kind of a sensitive topic because at the same time I feel very very annoyed that a lot of people 
don't care. They don't have an opinion or they're too afraid to voice it because they're, they're afraid that they're going to lose some friends or some things, some bad things are about to happen. Nowadays, people also talk a lot about cancel culture. This and that gets canceled because they voice their opinion. So basically, it seems like a lot of people are expected people to shut their mouths. But that gets things even more complicated. You know, once you start censoring or canceling everybody out, that's like, uh, what happens next? Nobody is going to make anything brave. And I am not definitely in for any kind of a toxic behavior. But I mean, even those so-called toxic people have the right to voice their opinion. At least then we know what to like and what not. But if everybody is just like, yeah, 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 smiling, happy face, and yeah, it's sun is shining, and blah, 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 I'm not going to print my lyrics because they might offend somebody. I'm going to put just black cover without any kind of uh, image on it because I'm not going to offend it. That's fucking boring. I mean, if we remove all the possibility to just, you know, talk about offending topics or talk about our own opinions, what is left, really? All bland shades of gray and I don't think none of us actually wants it. So all I'm saying is that I would like to see more brave takes, more arguments, more you know people actually thinking and talking about topics, topics that actually make them tick, topics that trouble them and or annoy them, not just kind of a happy-go-lucky kind of a buy some music because we all know that's happening in the end anyway, as long as the music is good. Anyway, long rant about a topic that's basically nothing. Or is it? Anyway, looking forward to your takes. Do you have publications which have interesting uh, opinions or columns or pages or articles that go beyond the peer, peer promotion? Or do you even care? Is it always music first or is there something else also beyond that? Looking forward to hear your comments or opinions and do you want more of these kind of opinion takes or are there waste of time and all. Looking forward to hear from you. Take care. This is Rauda. Bye-bye.